Hello guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. My name is Rajat and today we will be discussing the question non-negative integers without consecutive ones. In this question, we are given a positive integer n and we need to return the number of integers in the range 0 to n whose binary representation do not contain the consecutive ones. In the first example, as we can see that n is equals to 5 and we have 5 numbers in between 0 and 5 which do not have consecutive ones in their binary representation. And similarly in the rest of the example. Now the n can range from 1 to 10 raised to power 9. So in no way we can do a brute force approach or even a of an approach won't suffice over here as the input is very large. So now let's first understand what the problem is all about and how we can solve that. So suppose the queries that we have with us is n 8, 10, 12 and 15. We have taken all these numbers in order to understand what all the different variations of this particular problem that can exist. So if we have all the binary representation from 0 to 19, the given number to us is 8 and we see that there are 3 numbers in between 0 and 8 whose binary representation contains consecutive ones. So we do not count those numbers and we return the rest of the numbers which means 8 minus 3 plus 1 equals to 6. So this 6 becomes the answer that we need to return. Now we move to the next query which is n equals to 10. In this case we again see that there exist only 3 numbers whose binary representation contains consecutive ones. So we return 10 minus 3 plus 1 8. In n equals to 12, we see that there are two more numbers. So the answer now becomes 12 minus 5 plus 1 equals to 8. And similarly in n equals to 15. So now let's forget about the rest of the numbers and just focus our attention on the power of 2. So we have power of 2 to 0 contains only 0 value with the consecutive ones. With 1, it is only 0. With the power of 2 as 2, which is 4. So up till 4 we have only one number, up till 8 we have 3 numbers and up till 16 we have 8 numbers. We have written down these numbers from the previous binary representation that we saw. But now let's try to understand if there lies any pattern wherein we can find how many values with consecutive ones that exist till that particular power of 2. So let's take an example for this. We'll take an example of 2 raised to power 4 which is 16 which has a 5 bit representation. Now in case of 5 bits representation there can be a scenario where the primary bit is either 0 or 1. So now when the primary bit is 0 we are left with the rest of the bits to be filled in which is the power of 3. So this means whatever the result that we get of the number of consecutive ones of power of 3 should be added into this power of 4. We have already calculated that value so we can write that down that number of consecutive ones at 2 raised to power 4 which is 16 is f3. We are writing f as a representation of the value that exists in this key value pair. Now the primary digit can now be 1 also. Now when it is 1 there can be 2 more scenarios wherein the next bit is either 0 or 1. So now if we see the top bit representation it is 1 0 and then the 3 bit are empty. In those 3 bits we can have a power of 2 that is there can lie from 0 to 7 any number in this particular place as the starting 2 bit does not form consecutive ones the rest of the bits that is given by the power of 2 whatever number it gives as the consecutive number of ones will be the answer. So we will add that into the consecutive ones at 2 raised to power 4 which is f2. And now let's focus our attention on the rest of the bits that is 1 1 and the rest of the 3 bits that are empty. Now in this case we see that the first 2 bits are 1. That means they already form a consecutive ones and all the values after this bit should be counted in the number of values with the consecutive ones. Now the number of values remaining are 8 which is 0 to 7. So we directly add those values into the number of consecutive ones at 2 raised to power 4. In this case 2 raised to power 2. So if we see that the number of consecutive ones at 2 raised to power 4 which can be represented as f4 is nothing but f3 plus f2 plus 2 raised to power 2 and it would be a little tricky at this particular point. So let's see that again. If we see that in a number line wherein we have a number from 0 to 16 and we need to find out how many consecutive ones that exist in between 0 to 16. We see that we can directly remove 0 to 8 as the primary bit in this case is 
0. So that becomes our F3. Then the primary bit is 1 but the next bit is 0 which is up till 11. So this makes out number of F2 that is 2 raised to power 2. There are 4 numbers. So in these 4 numbers how many consecutive ones exist that becomes our F2. And then the rest of the bits are all counted in the consecutive ones as starting from 12 to 15 all numbers contains consecutive ones as a first two bits. So we directly add 2 raised to power 2. So that's how we got the formula of finding out the number of consecutive ones for any power of 2. If we generalize this formula it becomes f of n is equals to f of n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus 2 raised to power n minus 2. This is quite similar to the Fibonacci series that we work with. We are getting some result from the previous two results that we have calculated. So for the base case we know that 2 to the power 0 gives us 0 answer and 2 to the power 1 is also 0 and thereafter we can proceed further. When we implement this formula to all the values and see if it matches with the what the result we were getting previously it matches and so we can conclude that this formula works. Now this only works for a power of 2 but the question asks us to find out any number in between 0 to 10 raised to power 9 given and how many value that exist which does not have consecutive ones. So if we know the number of consecutive ones it is very easy to find out the values which does not contains consecutive ones. So we will try to find out the number of consecutive ones. So we will start off with the first query that we have now n is equals to 8. 8 is directly a power that is present in the key value pair that we have. So it is 2 raised to power 3. It matches with 2 raised to power 3 and we can directly return 3 in this case. So number of values with consecutive ones for n equals to 8 is 3. So the answer that we need to return in this case is 6 which is 8 minus f of 3 plus 1. We are doing plus 1 for the 0. So we return 6 in this case. Now let's move to the next query that is n equals to 10. Now here is what the actual logic starts with. n equals to 10 lies in between 2 raised to power 3 to 2 raised to power 4 which means that the value of the consecutive one can lie in between anywhere between 3 to 8 but it is at least 3 and at most 8. So we know that n equals to 10 can be represented in 4 bits and as we discussed that it will contain at least 3 consecutive ones up till value 8. So we will directly add f3 in this case and now we need to find out how many more values are exist. Now we have found out all the values where the primary bit was 0. Now the primary bit is 1 because we know that the binary representation of 8 is 1 triple 0. So the 1 is fixed now and now we need to find out the more values that exist in between 8 and 10. So as we discussed earlier also the secondary bit in this case can be 0 or 1 and 10 can lie in either of the two cases. Now if 10 lies in the first case then we need not to add any value for the second case and if 10 lies on second case then we can directly add the number of values of the first case. So now as we know that the value starts from 8 from the first case and from 12 second case we know that it lies in the first case so we can directly remove the second case. The remaining values in between 10 and 8 are 2 that means we need to find out how many values of consecutive ones that exist in between 0 and 2 because we have already found out the number of values from 0 to 8. So we can now remove that 0 to 8 and we just need to find out the value of 2. In this case we need to again call the same function that is a recursive approach that we are following over here. So for the left out part we can again call the helper and that will give us the result. 2 is directly the power that is present in this key value pair that is 2 raised to power 1. So 1 is correspond to 0 so it will return 0. So it becomes 3 plus 0 is 3. So number of consecutive ones for n equals to 10 is 3 and the answer that we need to return is 10 minus 3 plus 1 which is 8 which matches with what we were expecting. Now let's move to third query which is n equals to 12. Now in this case n lies on the second case that is 12. So we need to directly add what all values there exist in between 8 and 11. So in between 8 and 11 it amounts to 4 values which we have found out previously also that we can directly call in f2. We need not to call the helper method again because 
we know that if we are finding out all the values in between 8 and 11 it amounts to 4 values 4 is power of 2 and we can find out directly that from the map that we have created so it becomes the power of 2 f of 2 we can directly write that and now we need to find out the rest of the values that are present starting from 12. Now starting from 12, we need to find out how many values exist in between 12 and 12. So in this case, it is only 1, that is 12. Why we are doing this? Because of the same reason that the first two bits are already 1-1, one, one, making a consecutive one. And any bit coming after these will be added directly. So we will just add those. So in this case, f of 3 is 3, f of 2 is 1, and then we have 1. It gives us 5. So the answer becomes 12 minus 5 plus 1 which is 8 which matches with the answer that we had. Now this might be tricky so let's again jump back to the line diagram that we have wherein we have 0, 2, 4, 8, 16 and we need to find out the number of consecutive ones till 12. So these are the number of consecutive ones that we have already calculated and we are sure that we can directly remove these 0 to 8 as we have already calculated this value so we remove this we add this into the result so the result now becomes 3 plus now let's zoom in to the line and we have values in between 8 and 11 and as the halfway between 8 and 16 is 12 and the value lies after or equals to 12 we can add all the values that are present in between 8 and 11 that amounts to one value so up till 11 it is four values so we can add one and now the rest of the value that we can add is from starting from 12 up till 12. So in this case it becomes a one value so it gives result as 5. How about the value was 14? In this case we have already added the values up till 11 which is 4 and there exist now 12, 13 and 14 that are three values that we need to add so it becomes 3 plus 1 plus 3 equals to 7. So I hope you got the gist of the approach that we are following in. So now let's try to code this particular approach that we discussed and it will make much more sense then. So now let's try to create the values which are directly the power of 2. We will be using an array and I'm making this variable as static because we will be writing code in the static block. Now. Writing a code in a static block means it will be executed only once at the start of the application. So we will create that data at the start so that we can use it and we need not to calculate those results again and again as the function is called. So this DP array that we have created will be of length 33 because it is a 32 bit integer. So we are taking 33. Now as we knew that for the power of 0 the value will be 0 and similarly 2 to the power 1 is also 0 so we can put those values and now all we need to do is value from 2 till 33 so we know the formula that is dp of i is equals to dp of i minus 1 plus dp of i minus 2 and plus the value now this value is 2 to the power of i minus 2 so we can start this value with as 1 we can then double this value at each step now the initial data has been created and we just now need to find out the number of integers. So we need to find out the values which has the consecutive ones and it will be then easy to find the values which does not have consecutive ones. We'll take that into variables once we'll have a helper method at the end the answer will be n minus the ones plus one. Now let's write down the helper logic. So we are returning an integer. We discussed that we need to find out the closest power of this number. So in order to find out the power of this number, we can do math.log of this number divided by log of 2. Now this is a very standard formula to use in order to find out the power. It gives you the result in a double. There are already questions like is power of 2 and is power of 3 that you can check out. Now if this number is a complete power of 2 then we need not to find out anything we can directly return the result. So if this power is equals to the integer representation of power that means there is no value after the decimal point we can directly return the value present at this power. Now in case of n equals to 10 or 12 what we did is we took the lowest power that is 2 raised to power 3 which is 8 
and add all the in the result. So in order to take the lower power, we will do a floor. So we will write power is math.floor and we can add that into the answer. So it will be dp of, we need to convert this power variable into integer as it is a double and add those value into the answer. And now the next part that we did was the number of values remaining in between the number and the lowest power that we have found out. And if the value is greater than the number of value that are in between it and the highest power. So to make it simple, let's calculate some of the values. So this is the lowest number till that we have find out the answer. So it will be, so we have already found out the number till this lowest number. And now we need to find out the values that are left. So the number of left values are n minus the lowest number. So we got the left out values. If this left out value is greater than or equals to the lowest number by 2, then the answer lies for the second case wherein we can directly add the first case. So we can directly add the value of power minus 1 and the number of left out values. The number of left out value in this case becomes left minus lowest number by 2 and plus 1. And if it does not, then we discuss that the answer will be nothing but the finding out the answer for the left out values. At the end, we need to simply return the answer in this case. We need to make this as an integer. And now we can either use math.power, that is the inbuilt function. But since we need to find out the power of 2, it doesn't make any sense to use this function. We can directly use the bit manipulation wherein we find out by doing left shift of this power. So once we have that, let's try to run this code. So it ran successfully for all the sample test cases. Let's submit this. So it got submitted successfully. The time complexity is log n and the same is the space complexity in order to maintain the recursion stack. Do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one.